Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwadash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, starting with the 144,000 men of Israel, which consists of the servants, the prophets, whom have been ordained since the foundations of this earth to sing this new song, which comes in the form of this gospel, which would be preached throughout all four corners of this earth and rest upon the ears of the innumerable multitude, men, women, and children of Israel, which may be scattered throughout all four corners of this earth it's just bayan back again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to get into a brief lesson visiting the comment board. <clears throat> uh, I had an individual come on a uh, recent lesson uh, I did going into how the prophecy is of no private interpretation, going into those three, those three missionaries. That we had an encounter with uh, last week. And pretty much, um, you know, the individual left a comment. Matter of fact, I'll get the comment, you know, but before I get it, it's pretty much going to the same old, you know, Jesus came for everybody, you know, got the name wrong, got the understanding off, you know, and these are strongholds, okay, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that are being brought down with this true gospel. You know, and this is why it's necessary for us to continue to go into uh, the true name of the Lord and you know, the, uh, the fact that he wasn't a, uh, he wasn't a white man, a so-called white man. You see that he didn't come for everybody. You know, because there's still a stigma out there. OK, that yeah, who they didn't really call Jesus Christ. His name is Yahweh Shai. That's the true name of the Savior. And his father's true name is Yahweh. Okay, Yahweh's, mean, Yahweh's name means he is, he exists. You see, he's omnipotent, man. Bahashem means in the name, and Yahweh Shai, who you people ignorantly call Jesus Christ, all right, his name means what? He delivers. Yah means he, Yahweh Shai means deliverer. Okay, and <clears throat> there's a stigma on the planet, okay, that he's coming back for everybody. Okay, and that again, a stronghold. Okay, that Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, was able to form, all right, through, throughout the course of uh, the Renaissance period, okay, when this man uh, was able, uh, you know, to spring forth upon that deadly wound being healed, which was Western Rome, and this man being able to erect, okay, this diabolical queendom known as uh, America, man which is Mystery Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon. You can read about in the scriptures. Okay, and this man was able to, uh, you know, push a falsified doctrine. Okay, he was able to paint an image of the Savior and his father and the angels and, you know, all the heavenly body, you know, our ancestors as, as, as uh, so-called white people, man. <laughs> okay, he was able to push a universal doctrine, philosophy, Okay, which is a complete lie. And we're going to show you that. So through the spirit and power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, before we get this uh, comment, <clears throat> let's go here real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It's a lock here. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Bear with me. All right, here we go. Um, in verse 4, and it reads, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, right? What? They're spiritual. You see, our weapon is this word, okay, which is likened unto what? A double-edged sword. Pursuing the Hebrews, what's that, 4 and 16? 
right? But mighty through Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai to the pulling down of strongholds, man. Okay, and again, Esau's lies he's been able to project throughout all four corners of the earth regarding the Bible, who the chosen people are, the name of the Lord and his father, who they come who Yahweh Shai is coming back for. He was able to uh pretty much throw out a covering cast, a veil over the people's faces, man. All right, and create a a, a philosophy, okay, to get the people drunk. You see? And one of the main ones is this one. Let's go ahead. Let me try, let me just get it from right here. It wasn't from too long ago. Bear with me. Um <clears throat> Um, is that it? There it goes. Right here. Now, this individual at Sam, 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 uh, Sam, Samira, you Samira, whatever. Hey, and at the end of the day, this is for edification, you know, because it's still a, again, a, that vibration of, uh, you know, the Lord coming back for everybody. That's still out there in the world, man. You know, that's why this, this is going to be repetitive. We're going to be like a broken record. Right? Like it says in Matthew 24 and 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Right? Throughout the whole earth, man, for a witness to the nations. And then the end's going to come, roughly paraphrasing that precept. See? So this gospel is going to be being preached until the very end, until the Lord takes his word off the street, until he takes the word off the internet, and he removes, he removes his men. You see? And those, and those, and those uh, doors of repentance for you, Jake, are closed at that point. But let's get this. Not sure about this, they write, right? Where's the rest of the people? And I'm thinking they're regarding the chart. Because in the beginning of a, in the beginning of the lesson, I always put up the, uh, see that? I always put the chart up through the Spirit. The Spirit had me do that since the Lord put the Spirit on me to even stop making videos. You see? You do it, put the chart in the beginning and in the end of the video. So I'm assuming that they're talking about that. But anyways, not sure about this. Where's the rest of the people? And they write, Jesus came for all. I'm going to show you. All right. Through the sparing and power of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's a lie. Okay. And one precept, all these so-called Christians will try to use in efforts to defend that fact. Or not even fact, but idea rather. Is you, Aki Yamanak, what know where I'm going. John in 316. Matter of fact, let's go here. Because you know we got to go into uh, some words. So they'll try to go here, John 3, 16, right? And it reads, for God, I'm going to read it verbatim, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, if you read this precept, face value, man, you will start jumping for joy. You'll probably try to reach out to uh, vocab, no precept, Malone, Right? Tell them we got them. But nah, man, you got to do this. You got to go into the context of the scriptures because understand something. <clears throat> the, the scriptures were translated. You see? And they were written in Greek and what? Uh, Hebrew, man. So you got to go into the context of the scripture. So when you go into this word, world, in the blue letter, study Bible, Strong's G, 2889, Cosmos, Cosmos. Because what you got to understand is that there's three different types of worlds, okay? World as in the actual earth, okay? The globe, right? World as in what? A time span, an eon, right? And world as in what? This right here, let's get it. An apt or harmonious arrangement. See that? The world of sports, right? Uh, the world of fashion, the fashion world. You see what I'm saying? Hey, let's continue on. Or constitution, right? Order. Government. See? And in this, in this, in this <laughs> precept, in this scenario, all right, it's talking about the world as in Israel. Okay? And we read, when we read it in context... 
It tells you what, and we're gonna we're gonna get precept. We're gonna go precept upon precept, right? John three sixteen. When you read this in context, for God so loved the world of Israel that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in Him, right, what, repent and turn to Yahweh Shai, being that He's our mediator, right, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay. Now, what's it tell us when we go to the book of our uh, real quick? Let's go here. We're going to be moving around. Lord willing, this isn't going to be long. This is not going to be too long. Just straight to the point. The book of Isaiah chapter 9, real quick, in verse 6. <clears throat> and it reads, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. What government? <laughs> the government of Israel. Why do you think when we looked up that word cosmos, one of the words there was what? Government. Because that's what it's going into. It's talking about the government of Israel. You see that? Which is going to be upon whose shoulders? Yahweh Shai's. Right? And his name shall be called Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Power. Right, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. You see that? And that's the spirit because that's you can also prove that he was Solomon because Solomon's name means what? Uh, peace. You see? And we had that 40 years of peace under Solomon where we were where we were, you know, in our glory, you know, for what it was. Right? But let's continue on. Of the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end. See that? Because at the end of the day, only Israel is going to have an everlasting salvation and an everlasting kingdom. It tells you that in Daniel 2 and 44. Let's continue on. And many other places. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. See that? The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Wait, I got another one real fast. Luke, the first chapter. All right, when you go to Luke 1, and um, verse 28. Right, let's start at verse 28. All right, this is when Mary was talking to the angel. Check this out. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, right? Because what? She bare the Savior, man. She was a vessel used to bring forth Yahweh Shai. See? And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yahweh Shai. You see that? Hold on. Wait. There's more. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord Power shall give unto him the throne of his father David. You see that? And this is what you Christians, you wacky tacky so called Christians don't understand. You don't even know what the throne of David is, man. You don't even know what the throne of David is, man. You don't, even, you don't even understand the concept, okay, of the tabernacle of David being raised up real time. Because you don't understand prophecy, okay, and you're, and you're coming under a false doctrine. You see? And the, the spirit is not dwelling uh, within that, within that uh, <laughs> uh, uh, philosophy or, 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 or doctrine. For lack of better words. You see? It's dogma. It's, it's Greek mythology, man. Let's continue on. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Right? And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. You see that? There's going to be no end to his kingdom. 
This is talking about pure Israelites. As far as the Savior coming back for. As far as the Savior coming back for, 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 for salvation for his people. The other nations are not uh, part of this thing. You see? Who else is crying out real time? All right? As we're being persecuted under the watch of Esau eating the so-called white man. A so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. And speckled birds, man. That may look like the other nations, but their bloodline goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see? The book of Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 19, it reads, In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord Yahweh in the midst of the land of Egypt. Okay, and this is talking, this is talking about Mystery Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, man. Spiritually Sodom in Egypt, Revelations 11. This is not talking about literal Egypt, man. Okay. And a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord Yahweh. Right. And this is like unto these various camps. Throughout all over Babylon, man. You know? And throughout the world for that matter. And it shall be for a sign. Right? For a witness unto the Lord Yahweh of hosts in the land of Egypt. Talking about America. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, man. Who's crying right about now? Our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. And again, the speckled birds. All right? That may look like the other nations, but their bloodline goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see? And they look like the other nations because of the curse in Deuteronomy 28 and 64. We've been scattered. You see? For they shall cry unto the Lord, Yahweh, because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. You see that? <laughs> Not everybody. And to get even more uh, detail with it, let's go ahead. Acts 5. When Apostle Peter and the other apostles were being persecuted, okay, what the uh, what the Apostle Peter say to uh, the high priest, man, and the captain as well? Uh, let me see here. Here it goes. The book of Acts chapter 5 and verse 30, and it reads, The power of our fathers raised up Yahawashai, whom ye slew, and hanged on the tree. Him had Yahweh exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give for to give repentance to Israel. See that? And forgiveness of sins. Acts 5 and 31, the New Testament, might I add. Because you know you got a lot of those out there. Oh, that's in the Old Testament. Those New Testament junkies. Yeah, that's in the Old Testament. Here, here we are in Acts 5. Here we are in Acts 5. You see? And yeah, Luke 1 is so. Luke 1 uh, uh, spoke volumes, man. <laughs> Luke 1 brought it home. Yeah, hey, we got another one right here in Acts 5, man. All right? Real detail. All right? To give repentance to Israel, man. And forgiveness of sins, man. And why does Israel have to repent? Why does Israel need to be forgiven? Because Israel was the only one, okay, that, that was chastised by the Lord because of our transgressions. As a matter of fact, he's the only one we, he knew, we knew. He knew. Let's get this real quick. Amos 3 and verse 1, and it reads, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. You see that? Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. This is why Israel needs repentance and forgiveness of sins, man. You see? In 
And only Israel has that everlasting salvation. Let's close out right here. The book of Isaiah chapter 45. In verse 17. And it reads. But Israel. Shall be saved in the Lord. Yahweh. With an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed. Nor confounded. World without. And to answer your question, you submit, uh, uh, you, uh, what is it, you Samara or whatever your name is, to answer your question, where are the rest of the people, right? There, there you have it. Because the rest of the people don't matter. Okay? The, seven, the other 17 nations aren't part of this uh, uh, a marriage, okay, with the Most High, Yahweh Shai, and his people. They're not a part of it. See, oh, it's all about the Israelites, man. See, proving that Yahweh Shai didn't come for all, who you ignorant, who you ignorantly call Jesus. You see that? He's only coming back for Israelites. He's not coming back for niggas, spicks, Native Americans. You see, he's not coming back. No, he's coming back for Israelites, man. Gadites, Judites, okay, Benjamites, Ephraimites. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> Issachar writes. You see? This is who he's coming back for, man. Levites. Yahweh Bashim Yahusha is not coming back for anybody else but his people, starting with the elect. As a matter of fact, let me leave you with that. We'll close out there. Um, the book of Isaiah chapter 59, starting with the elect, because what's the elect going to do? Repent and walk this path of righteousness to the best of their ability. Let's close out right here. Isaiah 59 and 20, and the Redeemer, right? Yahweh Shai shall come to Zion, which Zion in the Paleo Hebrew is to Zion, which goes into monumental memorial. It's another way to say Jerusalem, which is a people before it's a place regarding us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. You see? And unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. You see that? When you turn from transgression, what? You repent. This is who the Lord's coming for, man. Point blank, period. <laughs> All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect that believe in this truth and that walk the path of righteousness to the best of their ability. Lord willing, you were edified. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Kahalayim la Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakah Kwadash. Shalom.